Hello everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to Skybyte Studios and in this video we are going to be taking a little bit of an early look at the new Studio Series 22 Deluxe Class Dropkick from the upcoming Transformers Bumblebee movie. And yeah, there you have him. I did get him on eBay. That's how I was get, able to get him a little bit early overseas, I think in Taiwan. And that explains this little label right here that is just in Chinese lettering. But yeah, let's take a quick look at the box before we open the figure up. There you can see the figure right there. He is small and you're going to hear that from a lot of reviewers if you have not already. He is a very small figure. But yeah, you can see there are two weapons right there. There's a picture of Dropkick right here uh, from the Bumblebee movie. On this side, a photo of him, not an Autobot. And then right here, it says big screen inspired. He is Autobot Pursuit and his bio, short bio says Dropkick detects the signal of a high level Autobot criminal and prepares to close in on his target, which if you haven't seen the trailer already, spoiler alert, it's Bumblebee that he's talking about. And then you see the other Studio Seas figures that are going to be release, uh, released. <laughs> Sorry, another picture of Dropkick and there you go. Let's get this figure open and see how it looks. All right, everyone, and here he is. There is Studio Series Dropkick in his helicopter mode. Now, as always with my videos, please stay tuned till the end because this is packaged in robot mode. I'm gonna start in vehicle mode for this review and I'm going to transform it to robot mode, but stay tuned for the end so you can see the transformation from robot to this mode. All right, so let's get started. Before we get to the figure itself, let's take a look at the backdrop that all the Studio Series figures come with that I actually really enjoy. You may not, but I like these even though I can't really use them because they're big. But there, you can see it's kind of like an aerial battle. This is the exact same one that comes with the Studio Series 09 Thundercracker, uh, which is, oops, move the camera. It's pretty safe to assume this is not gonna appear in the movie because it shows up with Thundercracker and that didn't appear in any movie. But very cool nonetheless. I actually really like this background. It's one of my favorite ones. But there we have that. Now we're gonna move on to the figure itself. There you can see he is a really nice helicopter mode. And what I could see, from what I can see in the trailers, this is gonna be a pretty cool character. He did utter just one line. I, th I couldn't hear it clearly. I think it was, he will burn the whole planet to cinder. When talking to Shatter, I'm like, that's a badass voice. <laughs> and yeah, there you can see his primary color is gray with some blue. It is a bit monochromatic, but the way I see it, military vehicles are pretty monotone anyways so I'm completely fine with it you can see there are some nice paint apps there is this kind of pirate fly you could see on the side of the jet right here right there it is on both sides and then there's a zero zero one here with a star it says jet danger intake right there on the I guess the intake tanks here I don't even know if those are tanks I know nothing about helicopters but yeah there you go it's really really nice it does come with these missile launchers which are detachable right here you take, actually I'll take both of these off and this is what they look like and these do transform a little bit as well you can see there's kind of this Gatling gun pattern here in the front let's see if I could miraculously get this to focus on that you kind of see it there's some Gatling gun molding in there and this does transform a little bit and I'll show you guys that right now but it is tough you're gonna need some kind of tool to kind of wedge in there I'm gonna use the exacto knife hopefully it doesn't fling out at my eyes and you could rotate this out and becomes a longer gun and that's gonna be used in his robot mode and Every time when I practice this, the focus is fine. But once I start reviewing, it becomes a mess. There you go. Hopefully you guys can see that at least a little bit. And it does the same for this, of course. There you go. You got the two guns all transformed right there. We'll save that for later. And back to the helicopter. As you can see, this rotor spins freely and smoothly. This one does not. It does rotate, as you can see, but it's stiff. It's not going to be as smooth as that one that was actually a pretty nice spin but yeah there you can see it's really good it's small 
Um, but not as small as a lot of reviewers seem to make it out to be. It's definitely a petite figure, but he's long. And that's, let's kind of measure that. You can see right here, um, from the tip of the Gatling gun to the tail fin, it's about eight inches long, which is not too bad and about two inches tall. And I'm gonna bring out a figure that I feel like everyone has some variant of, which is Studio Series 01 Bumblebee. This is the, I think, Studio Series 19 version, but it's the same thing, same mold. You can see that's what he compares with. Now, I do have the other Bumblebee from the Bumblebee movie, but I have him in robot mode, and we're gonna compare that one in robot mode when this one's in robot mode. So, yeah, there you can see. I think that's a pretty accurate comparison. I don't think this is one of those helicopters that fits more than one people, so I think that's a pretty good scale. But yeah, there it is. Really nice helicopter mode. I like it. Cool, cool. And now let's get into the transformation. The transformation is involved and I like it. Um, there's only one issue and that's these parts. I'll get to that when we get to that. So we'll just kind of detach this part just like that. And then we'll kind of get these parts out of the way. These are very, very loose ball joints, extremely loose, and that's why they like to flop and get in the way of things. Then you can bend the rotors. They only bend one way. They can't bend the other way. No, they have to bend this way. So make sure not to force it too much. There you go. And then we'll go like this. This will split apart, and then it will swing out. There's a double hinge right here. This black piece right here, right there, is a double hinge. So this is gonna come outwards so show you that it's gonna come outwards like that and should click there you go there you can see it's now protruding out on the side we're gonna do the same thing to this side push out and should click there you go now we're gonna straighten this out bring it down like that for now makes things a little bit easier bring it down just like that now we could bring this down. You can see that's where Jock Kick's head is. You could bring this cockpit up. Don't close it all the way just yet. Then you can rotate all of this. And that's one thing about this figure. I'm not sure if it's something all the Jock Kick figures have, but all the joints are very stiff, which I would rather have since it is a skinny figure, as you saw he was in the box and even in his helicopter mode he is a skinny figure so i really appreciate that the joints are tight rather than loose pretty much the only loose joint is this ball joint on either side for these intakes and that's okay i would have preferred them to be tighter but it's fine so there you go clearly you can see these are going to be the legs so we'll transform these out first you're going to rotate here at the upper thigh like that and then right here you're going to I know, uh, uh, we'll do this first. Um, we're gonna bring this part, it was flat like this, you're gonna bring it up like this. That's gonna create the foot, which is the blue part, and then the side of the shin right there. And now with this, you're gonna bring the land, I don't know what this landing gear is, that's the landing gear, you're gonna rotate that in, and you're gonna rotate all of this around, just like that. And this is gonna be the back of the calf. You're gonna bring this in, trying to bring it as flush as possible. And then this part is just gonna collapse inside just like that and there you go that's one like all transform we're gonna do the same thing on this side so actually this is the side with the Gatling gun so this is where you're gonna push it inside just like that cool cool bring this up again out peg into place bring this around just like that collapse it in the back right here as much as you can and then this part this blue part will collapse in just like that and there you have the legs all finished up now next is the arms we're gonna bring the rotors just out of the way here make sure these are up and open you can rotate that make sure the blue part is facing up just like that we're gonna rotate or actually split this tail part open and then, oh, these are just still in the way. And then, once we have that, see, 
we're gonna bring this part up you can see there's a hinge here you're gonna bring this oh get out of the way <laughs> then bring this part up and bring this out of the way and then you bring these blue parts that you see here and bring that up just like that as much as it can all right and then what you can do is with that up you can bring this into the body all the way like that and that'll click into place right there just kind of a soft click click right there and we're gonna do the same thing on the other side you see right there there's a hinge we're gonna bring this up excuse me for the focusing issues right there bring that up bring this part like this so you have clearance to bring that up all the way bring the blue part all the way back as much as it can get this thing out of the way again and then just click that into place now you could shut the cockpit, se cockpit section you need to say that slow or else I'm gonna get flagged <laughs> but yeah oh, kind of fiddle with this try to get that just like that it doesn't really lock into anywhere which is a shame that's as much as I like this figure it's this part that really really bothers me it's these intakes right here excuse me while I try to fight this again Let's see there we go cool cool now we'll bring the arms down we'll rotate here at the bicep just like that this will fold up and then the tail part right here the very back will fold in and there's an arm all transformed we'll do the same thing on the other side rotate at the bicep oh, right here we're gonna fold this back and then fold one more time this way and there you have deluxe class studio series 22 dropkick in his robot mode and I've heard very polarizing things about this figure, but I personally really, really, really like him. I feel like I like him more than any other reviewer on YouTube so far. And I don't know why. I just do. I like it. I like how he's small. I feel like he should be small because I'm going to bring out Bumblebee right now. This is going to be the first height comparison. And you, if you saw the last trailer at the very end or one of the recent trailers, He's fighting Bumblebee, and they were not that much different in height. And he is a little bit taller, as you can see, which makes sense to me. And I am completely, completely fine with that. Um, the only thing I wish is maybe he were a bit thicker, not as skinny looking. Because to me, Shatter is a female character out of the duo, but this one has more of a feminine shape to me. And if you already saw the released photos of Shatter, that one looks a little like stronger or beefier. Which is, hey, if they're trying to go against stereotypes good for them but yeah to me i thought at first this one was the female character until i looked again at the character bios i'm like wait this is the male oh okay but yeah there you go that's the first height comparison i think that's a really good height comparison and that's actually um get him out of the way we're gonna give him his weapons right here and he does have a little bit of a problem holding them because there's this part that's raised above his fist but the gun doesn't the post here is not long enough to go into his hand fully and his hand is really small to begin with so it's like try to do the best you can and he could kind of hold it just like that yeah that looks really really cool to me um in terms of kibble not really much there's just the rotors here and the intakes the annoying ass intakes <sighs> but hopefully yours has better ball joints than mine but yeah, you can do whatever you want with these. Um, I personally just like to get them out of the way. Maybe fan them a little bit. I'm not sure which one's the more movie accurate look just yet because I'm not used to seeing his character. But if you saw in the trailers, he is a triple changer and he transforms into a blue muscle car. I feel like if they do a version of this figure like Shatter where it's of the, his car mode and then we have this one as well, I'd be fine with that. I think he would look better uh, with his alternate mode as a car in terms of his robot mode. But I wish also, above all, that he was a triple changer, which is a shame. We don't have that from any of the movie lines so far, but it's okay. But enough babbling about backstory. Let's get to the figure itself. The articulation is pretty darn good. That's as far as the arm moves that way. Full 360 because it is a ball joint here. You got some outward movement there. You got a little bit over 90 degrees at the elbow. 
Uh, no wrist articulation whatsoever because of the transformation. You can, I guess, bring it inward if you really want to. Let me get that out of the way. You can really bring it into itself right there if you really wanted to. The yeah, head is on. Is it a ball joint? Yeah, it looks like a ball joint, but it's very limited in movement because of the back pieces here. So, and it mine is actually really stiff. Ugh. You can turn the head, but it's really, really tough. Not really any up and down movement. No waist articulation because of transformation. For the legs, go out that far. A lot of range of motion going forward. Then I assume a lot going back. Yeah, a lot of articulation there. Go out that much. Could bend the knee really, really well. And that's part of transformation. No foot articulation. And that's about it. Oh, you got some swivel here because of the ball joint and transformation as well and then you got the thigh swivel right here i always forget the swivels in the thighs and the biceps but yeah there you have it it pretty much retains all of his um same color schemes as his, his vehicle mode with the addition of some red right here on the knees you know, we got a little bit more mechanical details you get some silver on the face i do like the face let's see if we could zoom in on that There's the face right there. I love his face. It looks really cool. It looks very Michael Bay-ish, uh, which of course fits the movie verse because it's Michael Bay's Transformers universe, unfortunately. Uh, but yeah, and it's interesting because of course, if you saw the trailers, they're going for more of that G1 nostalgia look, but then this one's kind of like, it wouldn't make sense if this one was the G1 look too. They still had to be some consistency with the movies. And yeah, I really love this figure. Um, let's do some more height comparisons while he's still in robot mode. So you guys saw what he looks like with the Bumblebee movie version of Bumblebee. And I thought I'd bring out the deluxe version of this Bumblebee right here, the original one. So this Bumblebee is slightly taller at the head as you can see there. And I thought I'd bring out another pretty small studio series deluxe figure and that is Jazz. And you can see he is... He is bigger than Jazz, even if you consider at the horns here, just a little bit. So yeah, definitely not the smallest um, Deluxe Studio Series figure. And yeah, that is pretty much it. Now we're gonna get into the transformation back into his helicopter mode. Let's start off with transforming the weapons here. Just fold these back in, which is a lot easier than the other way. There you go. There you, and then we'll fold this one. There you go. We'll leave these off to the side just for now. Um, let's see, let's start on the arms. So we're gonna fold this back out and then fold this in just like that. We're gonna rotate here so we get the helicopter panels kind of showing and lining up. Do the same thing on this side. Fold up, fold this all down, bringing the hand in, and then this will rotate right there so we get the consistent helicopter panels. Now we're going to lift his cockpit just a little bit right here, just to get some clearing space to bring these parts out. All right. Now we're going to um, undo this hinge right here in the back. So we're going to bring that down like this, bring the blue piece kind of out of the way. So, and then you can bring the blue piece down here. That'll not really lock it into place, but you know, give it a place to rest. And then we'll do this. We'll straighten out that ball joint. And that's what you're gonna be left with. So we'll do the same thing on this side. We'll undo this hinge right here. Try to straighten this ball jointed piece out so that's flat. Bring that out as much as it can and then rest this blue piece right up there. And then we're gonna bring these both up and join them getting the intakes out of the way there you go just bring them up like this peg them together all right there you go now we're going to get these fuel intakes we're going to rotate them so that the blue part is facing that way away from the tail of the helicopter just get that ready it's probably going to go down anyways but there it is we're gonna bring the legs down like so. That'll give us clearance to rotate all of this, including the chest and the headpiece, all the way around. 
and then that'll click into place and then this will bring up this top piece of the cockpit will open up that'll give you clearance to bring it over his head then you could close that back up and then we'll get to the legs so the further the legs you're going to rotate them at the thigh right here do that on both sides rotate right there now we're going to rotate this part we're going to bring the black piece up kind of like his landing gear or whatever you want to call it and then rotate this all around so that is flush now we're gonna open up this part of his leg there you go untab that and then straighten all this out now what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring this up and kind of bend it like that now you're gonna double hinge it back into the body of the helicopter so this is flush you don't see this ball joint so you're just gonna kind of stretch and click until that goes into the body bring this leg up to bend it and kind of do your best to fiddle with it so everything fits nicely together then there you go bring this wing up and bring the intake down that'll very ever slow sight slightly peg into the rest of the helicopter and there's one side done we're gonna do that whole thing the exact same thing on this side so bear with me so we're gonna open this part up i'm gonna rotate right here and we're gonna unpeg this part of the leg straighten all of this out so it looks like that now we're gonna flatten this part just like this side is so we could not see that bowl joint part sticking out we're gonna bend this slightly so we have some clearance just kind of stretch fiddle and do a lot of clicking to get that in there and that'll sit in the body really nicely everything goes exactly where it should pretty easily and then just kind of press press make sure everything's nice and flush bring the intake down that'll tab in ever so slightly and then bring the wing up straighten these out It'll click into place. Now all that's left to do is attach his guns right here. And I actually noticed that I forgot a step. So you can end right here. There is absolutely nothing wrong with ending it right here if you want it to be that way. But he does have a gun here that I forgot to take out. So all you have to do is open this up just a little bit take out the Gatling gun right there that was in his uh, kind of leg panel and just close it back up really easy could be worse <laughs> and there you go there is studio series 22 drop kick in his helicopter mode now like I said I hope they come out with a version of drop kick where he is in his muscle car mode and that would be really fun to display. And when Shatter comes out, I'm definitely gonna get her and display her, display her next to this guy, because just cool. Both of them look really, really, really cool. And is this the best Studio Series figure? No, definitely not. And definitely, definitely not the worst Studio Series figure, but I very much like it. I know there have been some polarizing reviews out there saying this is like a horrible figure, but there, it has some problems, definitely. You can't get over the problems, but uh, I have fun with this figure. I'm gonna, I like the transformation. The engineering is really, really nice. Like how everything folds up and even though it is skinny, it's a skinny vehicle mode going to a skinny robot mode. I like how it all just like compresses really, really nicely. And there's not really too much kibble in either mode revealing like any like in this mode you don't see really any robot parts other than the hands back here maybe like its head in the cockpit but yeah that's pretty much it i'm for some reason i'm having trouble with these panels normally i don't so that's just in this video that i'm having trouble with the panels but yeah that is pretty much it for this video if you stuck all the way around to the end thank you for watching it is very much appreciated if you have any questions about this figure or any transformers in general leave a comment down below ask away if i don't get back to it hopefully someone in the comment section will who knows the answer and they'll be able to help you out and as always please hit that like button and subscribe for more transformer videos and any other toy reviews in the future 
uh, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.